Well, I think that uh, you know, open innovation really is a, a, not just a, a business model du jour, but something that really is a, a new way of, of um, for all industries to compete. So, you know, essentially, I mean, the idea is that, uh, you know, the asset, if you can tap into the assets and activities of the world and the ideas and ingenuity of other people, that that's an infinitely larger uh, pool of, of ideas um, than you could ever manage yourself. And so, you know, the, uh, just mathematically, um, open innovation is an attractive business model because it will lead you into, into all kinds of things that you couldn't conceive of yourselves. Um, there's all kinds of uh, great examples of open innovation. I was just... Uh, um, you know, uh, talking with someone about uh, open innovation in the public sector, which isn't the first thought people have, but um, I would say that what the uh, U.S. Department of Education has been doing with Race to the Top is a great example of open innovation um, and a model for, uh, for other, um, you know, governments and sovereigns because, uh, you know, historically the model has been that government, uh, you know, allocates uh, uh, budgets and, and, you know, cabinet departments dole out money to different organizations and stuff, and for the first time, um, you know, the Department of Education is trying to come up with innovative ideas in education um, around, uh, you know, uh, problems in inner city schools and, uh, you know, the uh, shortfall in science and, and math training in this country and all that. And, and the way they chose to attack that was through open innovation. So there's a marketplace where people are competing for ideas and for grant money. Um, and it's really uh, sort of transformed the educational department. So that's an example in the private sector. You know, uh, many examples in the public sector, I'm sorry, many examples, you know, of, of, of private industries. So take uh, pharmaceutical companies. I think they're all, uh, you know, this is a huge industry that, again, traditionally has been a very closed model because your intellectual property is in drug discovery and owning patents and things like that. And yet going forward, all of the major pharmaceutical companies are looking at ways to surround their core business, the, the pills or the vaccines that they make, um, with all kinds of other services. So, uh, you know, ways for patients to, um, you know, uh, take drugs, monitor their conditions and stuff like that are that are delivered on mobile platforms. We heard one of the speakers talking about that kind of thing before. That's an open innovation model which will really transform, you know, the economics of the pharmaceutical industry and, and the, the ability of those companies to, you know, solve more customer needs. So that is a, one of the important ideas uh, behind open innovation is, is not just that, uh, it's a, it's a new kind of business model and it can lead you down economic pathways, but ultimately what it does is it really solves for, for more needs. Almost any you know, single product or service can be enhanced with information and tools and you know, connecting people to other users and communities and things like that. And so open innovation is really, um, you know, again, I think a sea change in the way business is going to operate. Well, I think first and foremost, I think the way to get any business person's attention is to look at it purely as a financial play. I mean, it really is a superior operating model. Um, you're reducing your uh, risk exposure. Um, you're uh, reducing your capital uh, allocation needs. Um, you're uh, being able to move more quickly, speed to market, um, you know, time to cash, all these things that are critical to businesses. So if you are tapping into you know, external ideas and things that are already uh, in a high state of development or, um, or you know, progressing very fast, um, you'll just be able to monetize those different assets uh, much faster, much more cheaply, uh, in a much, much more risk managed way if you follow an open innovation model. Well, uh, I think in terms of, uh, you know, developments in managing innovation, I, I think um, uh, there's a move from a, sort of a bottoms-up approach, which is if we give our employees uh, the tools and uh, some of the incentives, but more uh, some emotional support as opposed to harder support. But if we, uh, if we empower our employees, um, innovation will bloom, and it's the kind of let a thousand flowers bloom strategy. I think what companies are realizing right now is that um, <clears throat> Innovation, when it's not focused um, and tied to the specific strategies of the company um, and to the specific ways in which assets are allocated, financial assets, resource al assets, and things like that, um, it doesn't really work. So um, you're going from this bottoms up, uh, you know, sort of uh, spontaneous approach to innovation, thinking that it's serendipity and so we have to encourage that, uh, to something that's much more systematic and disciplined. Um, and so I guess the whole idea is that innovation is and should be a process. And it's a process of continuous experimentation, but it's focused on strategic goals. It's measured 
um, you know, in different ways, but still, you know, very important measures. It's not a loosey-goosey exercise. Um, it values learning as much as experimentation, but it, it's it's stage gated. There are results every uh, every step along the way, um, and uh, you know, organizationally, again, it's a process that you can manage and measure. Um, so rather than this uh, sort of spontaneous um, and almost, let's say, you know, free market idea um, approach to innovation within a company, I think now it's being driven much more top down as a systematic, you know, disciplined process as a muscle that companies need to build.